Colgate Comedy Hour. And now, here is the star of our show, Eddie Cantor. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of cozy sitting here on the steps. Psychologically, I feel closer uh, towards you. Not only you people here at the El Capitan Theater, but you folks at home. You know, we have a great show for you tonight. Frank Sinatra and Eddie Fisher. Isn't that good? And, uh, oh yeah. We'll be out here. I'll never forget the first time I saw Eddie Fisher. I went up to a Catskill Mountain resort called Grossinger's. You know, and as I drove up, I heard a voice. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> going to somebody new. It is Joy, though teardrops burn, but if someday you should want to return, please hurry back, and we'll make a new start here. Well, it's been a long way from Grossinger's, and look what's happened here. You know, the last time you were here, Eddie, you just came out of the army. You just came out of Korea. That's right. You remember? You were on your way to Germany to entertain the boys. Gosh, the things that have happened to you, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. I really am. The records you've made, and kids buying them, and grown-ups. My grandchildren, Michael, Judy, who knew Eddie Fisher. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people here tonight would like to hear some samples of the records you've made. Would you do it for me? I would love to, Mr. Cannon. Al Goodman with a lot of schmaltz, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yes, you made it fine. You made it fine. 
You, you know, Eddie, uh, honestly, uh, I, don't know, I don't know of anybody who would travel 3,000 miles to come here and sing a couple of songs for you. You're wonderful. Well, it is wonderful to be here, Mr. Kenner, but I, uh, I have something else on my mind. What is that, Eddie? Well, uh, I know that you're coming to New York for the opening of your picture. Oh, yes. And I was wondering uh, whether you could uh, do my TV show for Coca-Cola, NBC, Channel 4, 730. Oh, this boy has learned. Oh, he... <laughs> Eddie, I'll certainly be there. And, you know, last Sunday I was on one of these, what do you call them, platter shows? You know, this jockey. This jockey. Yeah. This guy. And he played a record. Oh, my papa, and the people just went wild. And there must be some audiences who haven't heard the record as yet. Would you mind? Would you do it? I sure would. Al Goodman, give it out with that, you know. <laughs> Don't forget, Eddie, you're coming back. You're coming back. You're going to meet Frank Sinatra in a little while. Uh, come in a little closer and get a peek. Get a peek at this because I don't want to make Eddie Fisher jealous. But I'm making Halo means natural beauty the first time that you use it. Don't forget that. And you need no special rinsing after you use it. Now, with Ida and our five girls, I know something about the problems that you girls have with your hair. And we found that it's absolutely true for brighter sparkle, springier curls, and longer lasting steps. Halo, everybody, halo. Halo, shampoo, halo. Let me see now. What is the costume that Mr. Cantor was wearing in the next scene? Oh, of course, the captain jacket for Maxi the Taxi. Oh, Maurice? Yes. Gee, there are good audience out there. I'm glad we had Eddie Fisher to give the show a good start. From now on, we roll. Oh, what are we doing? It's a quick change. We have to hurry. Maxi the Taxi. Oh, don't worry about that. Maxi the Taxi, listen. Before the meter says 20 cents, I'll be right out there as Maxi the Taxi. <laughs> Has this been a weekend for turkey? You know, Thanksgiving Day, we had a wonderful turkey. And I didn't mind the next day when my wife made me turkey croquettes. And on Saturday, turkey a la king. But today, she gave me for dessert, turkey shortcake. <laughs> Strawberries on turkey hash? <laughs> Is not agreeing with me at all. Hello? Hello, General Hospital? Would you please connect me with room 315? Thank you, nurse. Hello. Hello, baby. This is Mother. Hiya, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming right over to the hospital in a taxi to pick you up. Thank you. 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 Thank See you in a little while, baby. Goodbye. Gee, things are quiet around here. This is one of those days when nothing can happen for a whole week. Yeah? yeah? Uh, quick, the general hospital. Yes, ma'am. Hop right in. Thank you. I'll have you there in a jiffy. Get you to the hospital before you know it. Yes, ma'am. Anything wrong, lady? No, everything's just fine. That's good. I hope you won't mind a little idle curiosity, ma'am. But what are you going to the hospital for? My baby. <laughs> Today is the day. That's nice. Baby! <laughs> All right, madam. Sit back and relax. Don't get excited. I'll avoid every bump. By the way, are you hungry? I'll stop for a water bottle and a pickle or something, huh? No. No, I'm tired to eat. I've been bowling all day. <laughs> Please drive a little faster. Take it easy. I'll get you there in plenty of time. I can understand you're being excited. After all, you've been planning and thinking about this day for a long time. Oh, yes. Almost three weeks now. Three weeks? <laughs> Let's go home, lady. You've got 
plenty of time. No, I haven't. I, I realize it's much more sudden than we expected, but doctor assures me that today is the day. Three weeks. The things they do with penicillin. <laughs> Believe me, lady, there's no reason to rush for the hospital. Oh, I want to get it over with. You see, I planned a cocktail party at 4 o'clock. <laughs> the doctor says a couple of martinis will cheer my baby up. Give me the address of that doctor. He's a doll. <laughs> Doctors have certainly come a long way. When I was a baby, they gave me pablum. Are those your baby's clothes in the valise? No, his clothes are at the hospital. I just brought along a few things in case it rains. You know, a, a trench coat and rubbers. Oh, that's ridiculous. When it's time to leave with your baby, just carry him wrapped in a blanket. Oh, I'd like to do that. But the doctor says he'd better walk. <laughs> this doctor, are you sure he's all right? Of course. Why, top man in ear, nose, and throat. <laughs> Don't you think he's a little bit out of his field? <laughs> can't help being nervous. I hope they let me see my baby right away. Oh, don't worry. You'll see him soon enough. They'll bring him in for a feeding. Oh, I'm not going to feed him at the hospital. No. I'm going to take him to Ciro's. <laughs> nice. It'll certainly pep up the floor show. <laughs> I can tell from the way you're talking. This is your first baby. Oh, it is, yes. I can appreciate how nervous you are. It happened when my first baby was born. My wife and I, we went down to the hospital in his taxi cab. Gosh, I was nervous. My hand was shaking. I didn't know what I was doing. We'd have never made it if my wife wasn't driving the cab. <laughs> of course, with the second one, we went down by subway. When the third one came along, I just phoned in for the results. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful? Did you have the Blue Cross plan? No, it was our own idea. Please drive a little faster. Lady, we don't have to worry about driving at all. Look, here's the general hospital right now. Oh, thank heaven. I don't think I could have waited another moment. Here we are, lady. Now, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, go how ahead. much do I owe you? Lady, never mind what you owe me. Go ahead, run. No, no, don't run. Walk. Oh, but I have to pay you. You can owe it to me. I insist. All right. It's a dollar fifty-five, but, but hurry. Hurry. Here's twenty. Yeah. Oh, Twenty-two. Yeah. Lady, in this case, you'll never make it. Forget it, will you? It's deductible. Besides, with a ten percent tax deduction, I'll give it all back. Goodbye. Thirty. Lady, you don't have to pay me. Go on, think of your baby. Oh, all right. You wait here and keep your meter running. I'll be right out. <laughs> what have they got here? Curb service? <laughs> oh, never mind. I don't even have to go into the hospital. My baby's here now. Where? Where? This is your baby? I'd love to see what his father looks like. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I, I want to thank the Boston Taxi Drivers Association for the little citation which they sent me. And I'm hoping that Maxie the taxi will never do anything that will make him regret it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very special guest who has some special things to show you. He is lovely Jinx Falkenberg. Now that I've been introduced, I'd like to introduce you to Martha Washington. She's just one of a whole collection of enchanting Americana dolls. And what a collection. Each doll is exquisitely dressed in an authentic costume of the famous American woman that she portrays. And each Americana doll comes in her own very special, handsome history book album with her own biography by the Book of Knowledge. Now, you can have any or 
all of these delightful dolls for just one dollar each, thanks to a very special offer made to introduce the new Formula Fab. You see, with every doll and album you order, you get a coupon good for a large box of new Fab at no extra cost. That's a guaranteed two dollar and twenty-nine cent value, yours for only a dollar. I know you'll be thrilled with your dolls and with this new Formula Fab, which combines unbeatable cleaning and whitening power for your wash. You'll find Fab cleans and whitens your clothes as no other product can. So choose the dolls for your Americana collection from Martha Washington, Dolly Madison, Betsy Ross, Priscilla Alden, Barbara Fitchie, Molly Pitcher, Clara Barton, and Mary Todd Lincoln. Get an order blank from your fab dealer or just mail one doll alone for each doll you want to. Doll, Box 84, New York 46, New York. Remember that doll, Box 84, New York 46, New York. You'll love these dolls. Rexine, will you do me a favor? Will you take these dolls and pack them up for me so I can take them home to my granddaughter, Judy? Huh? Oh, these are beautiful. May I have one? Why, sure, you may have one, honey. You heard what Jinx said. Send for your doll today. That's dolls, box 84, New York 46, New York. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, Mr. Kenny, you'll have time to rest, won't you? Oh, yes, I will, because, you see, Connie Russell is coming on now with the debonairs. Connie is going to do her song, the new Capitol recording of I Want a Boy, and the debonairs, oh, are they good. They're pretty good, are they? Pretty good. I went all the way to Las Vegas to get them. But let's turn on the television set, because I don't want to miss a thing. Sure. I want a boy. A boy. I want a boy, a boy, a boy, a boy, a boy. I want a boy.
in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in his arms. Oh, what a thrill it's gonna be. For the first time in toothpaste history, here is clinical proof that offers new hope to millions for lifetime protection against tooth decay. Secret of this revolutionary discovery is new Colgate Dental Cream with Gargol, Colgate's exclusive new miracle ingredient. New Colgate Dental Cream with Gargol gives the greatest protection against tooth decay ever offered by any toothpaste. Leading dental authorities supervise tests on hundreds of people for a full year. Their findings proved new Colgate Dental Cream with Gardol gives the most complete, long-lasting protection against tooth decay enzymes ever reported in toothpaste history. Just daily morning and night use of new Colgate Dental Cream guards against decay-causing enzymes every minute of the day and night. Yes, this protection won't rinse off, won't wear off all day. Hear them, the answer for millions. New Colgate Dental Cream, the only toothpaste in the world with clinical proof. Proof that brings new hope to millions for lifetime protection against tooth decay. No other toothpaste offers proof of such results. No, 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 please, girls, no, will you stop this? Please, I've told you 10 times already. This is not Frank Sinatra's dressing room. He arrives later in the show. Right now, Mr. Eddie Cantor and Mr. Brian Dunleavy are on the stage. And in a very little while, they're going to do a sketch all about Western movies on television. This is the story of a man who, in order to reach his objective, spent 18 days and 18 nights in the saddle. I'm sheriff of Potshot County. This is the roughest, toughest frontier town in the West. But law and order is on the way. A posse set out 17 days ago from Cheyenne, and they're expected any moment. They're all after one man. <laughs> That's me, Freddy the Frog. They call me that because every time I come to town, somebody croaks. <laughs> I'm rough, I'm tough, and nobody bluffs me, because I can see right through them. If I can't see through them, I make little holes in them to help me, and then I see through them. <laughs> That's me, Eddie the Coward. I don't know why, but everywhere I go, people take pop shots at me. I'm on my way to visit my twin brother, Freddy the Frog, so I can get a little peace and quiet. Yes, there were two brothers, identical twins, Freddy the Killer and Eddie the Coward. Of course, when our story begins, none of us here in Potshot knew there were two of them. That's the trouble with the strong, silent men of the West. They don't do much talking, but what are they thinking? Well, I finally made it. I know what I'll do. Get a haircut, a shave, a bath. I'll go in a saloon, have a drink, wink at a pretty girl. Somebody will shoot me. <laughs> no, that's no good. I won't go in. After all, I'm only a stranger in town. The only friend I got is my faithful horse, Mendel. <laughs> Look how he looks at me. He loves me. I wonder what he's thinking. Oh, there he goes, wiping his hands on my nose again. <laughs> He's such a slob. 
I hate him. He makes me work like a horse. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired, I'd like to take off these horseshoes and soak my feet. He looks hungry. I'll give him something to eat. Come on. Put something in the pot, boy. <laughs> the only time I had a good meal was when I ran away from him and stuffed myself with local wheat. Man, was that a crazy weekend. I know what I'll do. I'll go in the saloon and get Mendel a horse's neck. <laughs> then maybe I'll run across my twin brother, Freddy the Frog, who looks just like me, spitting image. You couldn't tell us apart. <laughs> Freddy the Frog, the most feared gunslinger in these parts. I'm the sheriff, and sooner or later we'll have a showdown. I'll shoot him, even though it is a dangerous assignment. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> I'm plugging him in my TV show at the same time. <laughs> Dig this crazy Dick Tracy. What do you want from me? My horse isn't double parked. I'll show him my license. For me? Well, I got the draw on him, but I can't shoot him in cold blood. I gotta make him draw. I know what I'll do. Pretty good liquor. Well, he bought me a drink. I'll buy one for him. Better yet, I'll order drinks for everybody. Show him I'm friendly. I hope these people can afford this stuff. <laughs> Maybe I'd better go and wash my hands while the check comes. Pretty shrewd. He's picking his own spot for a showdown. Well, all these killers are the same. They turn yellow when they're faced by a brave man. And that posse's full of brave men. <laughs> Freddy the Frog. All my life I've been a gunfighter. I'm sick of the killing and fighting and shooting, but I can't quit. I get my bullets wholesale. <laughs> I hate sheriffs. Pretty shrewd. He's got the drop on me and he knows it. I'll wait for a better chance for a showdown. Do they think they're slapping on the back? I'll show them. <laughs> What's with all this shooting? The horse can get killed here. <laughs> I better go wash my hands. I never quit stand bloodshed. One of these days, pow! <laughs> Catch him red-handed. Then we'll have a showdown. I wonder what's keeping that posse. Pretty fancy saloon. They got two washrooms. <laughs> Lucky I didn't drink any of that stuff. Why did he have to come back to town now? Now, when everything is going so great between me and my girl, Connie. It's time for Connie's number. If he makes a pass at her, I'll kill him in cold blood. I want a boy. Oh, boy. I want a boy, a boy, a boy, a boy, a boy. A boy. I want a boy. You know something? My goose pimples have got goose pimples. 
what is this? All of a sudden, she doesn't smell the same. <laughs> oh, I get it. She's his girl. What is he going to do? No! <laughs> You're making enemies. <laughs> Give me a spoon of beer. I feel a little drafty, but otherwise I'm all right. <laughs> what do you know? I got a slow leak. Oh, such courage. Five bullets in him and he doesn't even flinch. That's why I love him. I've always loved him. Can't he see that? Why? Why haven't I noticed those eyes before? The love light in them. Those long, wavy lashes. That silky hair. That silky hair. That satin smooth skin. the story. We shot the wrong man. Freddy the Frog got away. And you know why? All oh, because the stupid posse is riding in the wrong direction. Hey, you fathead. He went that away. <laughs> One for the kitchen and one for the bathroom. Ajax, the foaming action cleanser. I know you like music, Maurice. Everybody does. And as an old minstrel man myself, I like to think that the spirit of a nation is reflected in the songs it sings. And this country has been singing the songs of a fine composer for many, many years. Songs like Over the Rainbow, Old Black Magic, Let's Fall in Love, Stormy Weather, all written by this one man, Harold Allen. He sings too, you know. And so I think you and the audience will get a real thrill when he appears on the show tonight. See, see wait a minute. I think he's going on right now. Yes, he's opening the music. <laughs> From moon sailing over a cardboard sky, but it wouldn't be make believe if you believe in me. Mm -hmm. yes. But it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. Without the love, it's a honky tonk parade. Without your love. It's the melody played in a penny arcade. It's the Barnum and Bailey world, just as hollow as it can be. But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. Maximum green gloom down to the minimum half-baked. 
for pandemonium's liable to walk upon the scene. No, don't mess with Mr. Imbecile. You know, Harold, there's one fellow that sings your song better than anyone else. Lately, he's become a dramatic actor. Pretty good, too. Frank Sinatra. I'm gonna love you like nobody's loved you. Come rain or come As a mountain and deep as a river, come rain or come shine. I guess when you met me, it was just one of those things. But don't you ever bet me. I'm gonna be true if you let me. You're gonna love me like nobody's loved me. Come rain or come shine. Happy together, unhappy together, and won't that be fine? When oh, we're out of the money, I love you, baby. I love you, rain or shine. I've got the world on a swing, sitting on a rainbow. Got the swing. Oh, what is the 
I take a chance, I be afraid of it. Let's close our eyes and make our own paradise. Now is the time for it while we are young. Let's fall in love. an exciting evening for you as it must be for all of America. Now, and Connie, thank you very much. You go with uh, Hal while I talk to Frank. Bye. Bye. Frank, I, I, I'd like you to meet Eddie Fisher.